The job of the fuel delivery system is to get the fuel to the injectors. We have to make the injectors happy. That's really all we care about. So there's essentially two things we have to look at, fuel pressure, which everybody thinks about, and fuel condition. So we're going to look at fuel pressure first. And the part that I want to focus on initially is how do we define fuel pressure? You hear people talk about fuel pressure. Seems simple enough. I have a gauge that says this much pressure. But I don't think people think often enough about how it's defined. In fact, I know they don't because I see a lot of errors in, in people's considerations for fuel pressure. There are essentially three methods of defining pressure, and all three methods vary based upon what the reference is. In all cases, we're measuring pressure relative to something. So our example there on the left, our reference pressure, this chamber right here, has an absolute vacuum. And we're measuring the pressure on the inlet to the sensor relative to a complete vacuum. Now, you'll recognize the term absolute pressure from your MAP sensors. I think everybody knows that MAP, and MAP sensor stands for manifold absolute pressure. So everybody gets that. Gauge pressure, that's the next consideration. Gauge pressure is pressure relative to the atmosphere. So when we talk about fuel pressure, as we're discussing fuel pumps, for instance, we're talking about gauge pressure because presumably, the pressure at the inlet to the pump is atmospheric, right? We're pulling the pump out of the fuel tank, that's sending an atmospheric pressure. So the pressure we read on our gauge is gauge pressure. And that's typically what we're referring to as we're discussing fuel pumps. Now, the third one is the one that seems to confuse people. And luckily, it's just as simple as the others. It's important to understand that this is what the injectors see and what the injectors consider. That is differential pressure, which is the difference simply between two points that are being measured. In the case of a fuel injector, those two points are the fuel pressure in the rail and whatever the pressure is in the intake manifold. So if we have a naturally aspirated car with, say, 40 pounds of pressure in the fuel rail and atmospheric pressure in the manifold because we're at full throttle, the differential pressure across the injector, meaning the difference between the inlet and the outlet, is 40 pounds. If we build boost, that differential pressure drops off. So what happens is if we build boost without increasing the fuel pressure in the rail, the injector flows less and less and less as the differential pressure decreases. But the important consideration is that that's what the injector sees. All of the injector characteristics are based on differential pressure, meaning the difference between the inlet and the outlet. And I'm not surprised that everybody's kind of shaking their head and looking at me knowingly, but you would be absolutely amazed how often we're faced with a question or, or a bad assumption based on them not understanding that. So, for instance, when the uh, boost comes up and your fuel pressure regulator cranks up the fuel to maintain a constant differential pressure, people often assume that, oh, well, the fuel pump is now putting out 80 pounds, so the injector is dealing with 80 pounds. Well, no. The differential pressure is still 40 or 30 or whatever it was to begin with. That's what that injector cares about. So. What's above, what's below, it doesn't matter. The absolute value is just the difference, and that's key when considering fuel injectors. There's two ways to control fuel pressure. Well, there's probably more than two. Let's say there's two that I'm familiar with and the rest of you are familiar with. The first is the mechanical regulator, and the other is electronic control through pulse width modulation of the pump. The mechanical regulator is very simple. We all know how it works. There's a spring-loaded diaphragm in there, and had I chosen the correct photograph, we would see a port up there on the top that goes to the intake manifold that supplies either intake manifold vacuum or boost to the top side of the diaphragm to maintain constant differential pressure. If that line is unhooked, then the injector has a constantly varying differential pressure and its characteristics change. So it's not at all uncommon or, or hasn't been in the past for someone running has anyone here done any road racing? What kind of low power naturally aspirated? There we go. Okay. Sometimes you map the engine based on throttle position rather than manifold pressure. And these guys will leave the line, the vacuum line or boost line, or in the case maybe off the regulator and say, well, it's not a map based system, so it doesn't matter. Well, it doesn't matter because as you open and close the throttle, that varying amounts of pressure in the intake manifold, the differential pressure changes. Now your fuel table represents not just the airflow of the motor across all these conditions, it also has to take into account the changing injector characteristics. So that properly qualifies as dumb, even though, I don't know, if I go back enough years, I've probably done it myself. 
himself or his once or twice and didn't get it. But that comes to the to the, the meat of the understanding of differential pressure.